110 degrees, and it was a stupid little commercial. You sit down in your chair, you take off your shoes, and you do some dancing feet thing, right? And you're sitting on this metal chair. This guy brings his, uh, sits down on the chair, he bends over and takes off his shoes, and then he just rips a massive fart for like, it was had to be like about a minute and a half against the metal chair, loud, you know, one of those. And the guy's so embarrassed, he gets up, and runs out of the room. He's embarrassed, he's mortified. He gets all the way down to the bottom floor. He walks out, he realizes he left his shoes upstairs. So he's gotta go all the way back up to get his shoes. And he walks in and people are hanging out the window with the fan, just trying to get rid of the stink in the room. And the guy goes home, he feels like an idiot. About three days later, he gets a call from his agent. He goes, hey, you booked that job. He goes, how the fuck did I book that job? And he shows up in the commercial and he goes, how, why did you book me? It was the worst, one of the most worst, worst moments. He goes, first of all, it was priceless. We didn't watch anybody else's audition. We just kept watching yours and laughing our balls off and rewinding it and watching again. And again, we must have watched it 300 times and we said, fuck it, give the guy the job. So we got, we got the job. So, you know, people beat themselves up on auditions, you know. There's always a little. So this is how Jimmy starts beating you in golf. He makes you laugh so hard before it even starts in 100 degree well, weather. Well, we get out there, it's 107. There's yeah. no golf carts. We're walking. How do you know golf cart? They forgot they, to charge it. It was yeah, like. They forgot to charge it. You know, it doesn't take much for a golf course except charge carts. Yeah. Like, you know, one of the, the grass once in a while, you know? <laughs> we're, out, we're out there, and we make the turn. Tony, Tony's supposed to be in the Mickey, that stuff you were talking about. Liquid he, IV. I gave him some. He gave me some liquid IV, bro. It's a game changer. Yeah. I started striping it down the middle just because I didn't want to. I was so exhausted. I wanted to just walk directly to my ball. And it was it was, it was, was unbelievable. But, yeah, we we got it in. It was a hell of a workout. But, oh, yeah. Uh, yeah, we had a good time. Great a lot time. of laughs. A lot of fun out here making the best of it. And I'm excited you're back here on Kill Tony. We've had fun. You've been on the show a couple few times. Yeah, man. Glad to have you back. And you might remember there's a band on this show. Nice. Every single episode they commit to being different characters. We never know what they're going to be. They've been backstage getting ready. Uh, they stay in character throughout the show. Could be a new character. Could be characters we've seen before. Let's all find out what they are tonight as I present to you the best damn band in the land. The Kill Tony Band. Jeremiah Watkins, Joel Bird, Joel Jimenez, Jet Ski, Jesse Johnson, and Chroma Chris. Uh-oh. Here they are. Wow. Oh, my goodness. Here they are, some postmen. We've seen this crew before for sure. There's a lady post, there's a post woman now. My goodness, with a tight little jerry curl. Look at that thing. And then, yeah, there's a whole crew here. My goodness gracious. Welcome back, Mr. Postman. I remember you. I remember you sounding sort of Native American last time you were on the show. Can you remind me of uh, your name? My name is Walter Fig. Walter Fig, yeah, you do sound Native American still. I hail from Fort Wayne, Indiana. Okay. But I am 100 year percent European, I guarantee you. You're European? Yeah, in my village that I was raised. Well, welcome back to the show, Walter Fig. Thank you. And then uh, look at this little adorable uh, little... Jerry Curl we got That's over here. Cheap. What's your name? Hey, what's up? I'm Hamatha. You're Hamatha? Hamatha? Hey, okay, just want to make All sure. Oh, it's getting hungry. Uh-oh. Hamatha, are you a lesbian postwoman? Oh, I'm straight as an arrow, Tony. Uh, okay, all right. I can guess what anybody is, is in their package. How long have you been a postwoman for? Oh, about 35 years. 35 years, all right. And then, uh, what, what's uh, what's your story, sir? You seem like an actual uh, actual postman. The, the kids call me Merv, the mailman. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> the mailman. All right. Why do the kids call you that? Because they're mean little shits who thinks they run the neighborhood. <laughs> but I run the neighborhood. Oh, my God. It's my mail. All right, Merv. Oh, my goodness. 
<laughs> Every single character that Chroma does that's a little bit older looks exactly like Sully Sullenberger, the hero, <laughs> Miracle on the Hudson. He can't help himself. Merv? And I always land my crashes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. And then over here, it appears as though we have what seems to be a young uh, Mexican Miley Cyrus type. What's your name? It is a party in the USA. My name is Carl Malone, Tony. Oh, that's right. You are Carl Malone? The mailman. The mailman, Carl Malone. <laughs> All right. That's exciting. You postal workers, uh, Walter, it appears as though you guys have been politicized by the left, um, but uh, they're just making big budget cuts because uh, mail's down 33% over the last four years. We guarantee you delivery of your mail in exactly three weeks' time. <laughs> Thank you, Walter. Thank you, Walter. Hamantha, what do you think about uh, about the recent uh, budget cuts? Hamantha. Hamantha. Ham you could call him Ham. Okay, well, Ham. Is easy. Uh, I, I like it. A lot of more packages to sift through, you know. Sometimes I open them up, just look inside, play with them a little bit, put them back. All right. Well, there you go. Good to know. You can trust your current uh, post office. You still use uh, the post office ever, Jimmy? Yeah, you know, uh, occasionally, you know, there's nothing wrong with a little snail mail, but I, you know, I go, <laughs> I would whenever I go to the post office, I would go, what was your backup plan? Blacksmith? What was your, you know, I mean, what are they, $47 billion in fucking debt? The stamp is like 37 cents. How do you lose fucking money delivering fucking packages? I mean, I guess Amazon Prime, they deliver Amazon Prime packages for free. Yeah. Hey, what you fucking charge How for? How dare you yeah. bring up that company? I'm sorry. I didn't uh, mean to... Amazon is a postman's N-word. Oh, sorry. I didn't know. <laughs> <laughs> so we got the mailman. We got the great Jimmy Schubert. We got Red Band and the soundboard. Uh, and I have a bucket. It's a bucket of destiny. We had uh, people uh, that uh, were chosen and signed up and chosen uh, before the show. And let's get the party started. But... Before we go to the bucket, there's only one way to get a real Phil Tony party started, and it's with a guy that they like to call the party starter. This guy, loved by many, including myself, one of my favorite top young rising comedians in the world. Some people call him the Big Red Machine. Some people call him the Holy Moly. Some people call him the Nuclear Belly Button. Ladies and gentlemen, I present <laughs> to you the great William Montgomery. Here we go. Here he is, live in the flesh. 60 seconds uninterrupted from William Montgomery. Uh, I like my women, like I like my coffee wrapped in styrofoam. Uh, what's the difference between a Lakers fan and a Clippers fan? Uh, trick question, they're both going to die in an earthquake that will strike on August 27th, 2020. <laughs> Uh, hey, you're either La Quinta in or La Quinta out. That's an impression of my landlord asking me to pay for my continental breakfast. Uh, I'm at the point where I just hope my son turns out either gay or straight. Uh, and Jimmy, I have to say I loved you as the detective in the Italian job. Thank you, sir. Okay, it's it's closing out. Closes out with a compliment. Forty seconds of jokes, ten seconds, seconds of, of jokes. compliments, and, uh, and here we are with the great William Montgomery. Hi, William. How are y'all doing? I'm drunk as shit tonight. Oh my goodness. No, I'm kidding. I'm no, I know. I can tell. You okay. can tell when you're drunk, believe it or not. Yeah, you're very happy when you're sober. Yeah. <laughs> It's true. <laughs> it really is. You're happy and effective. Your timing, your yeah. pacing, the jokes, even though the coffee Perfect. styrofoam thing, very risky to open with that. But you know what? It established your uh, oddballness right from the get. You followed it up with joke, joke, joke. An ine inevitable earthquake happening August 27th of 2020. Is that true? That is um, Thursday. Okay. Yeah, three weeks ago, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> three weeks ago. My goodness, that's interesting. Three weeks ago. It already Three happened, and the earthquake didn't even happen. Yeah, but I think it might happen on uh, the August 27th. Okay, what makes you think that? A premonition, if you will. Okay. What if that actually happens? Yeah, tell me about it. That 